No. You, oh, okay. Oh, that could be true. That could be true. Is, Stop, shut the f up. Did you learn language in school? <laughs> is that where you learned all of your words? You didn't know how to fucking speak until you got to school. I don't know how to say much. I was like three. I was the youngest in my year. You couldn't speak at three years old. You didn't know any words until you went to school, and that's I where you learned so how to part of that set. Answer the damn question, you slippery bastard. Yeah, there must be something. Uh-oh, who joined? Well, well, well. Oh, it's Lycan. What up? Not much, man. How you doing? Pretty good. Just chilling. You back home? Finally, yeah. Did you like chat with my uh, parents? I, I, I did. Your dad winked at me, so that either means I'm your brother now or he wants to bang me. Or it could have just been being friendly. Why are we making? <laughs> why, are we, why are we making sex jokes? My parents like it. Uh, I just thought it would be funny. I don't know. So why well, I make a lot of jokes, but yeah, you know, as clearly. they go, uh -huh. they're rarely funny. Um, no, actually, your parents are really nice. Um, your mom has the sweetest voice. Oh, she's so, super friendly. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So when you're talking to your mom, and then she starts saying the Republican stuff, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Pretty wild. <laughs> what I didn't expect so like I wasn't gonna sit there and like start bringing up politics with your parents mm -hmm. but then you know you just started poking <laughs> oh I love poking it's, I love um, them both I, I love my family so they're fun we can like argue and shit and it's okay we're not like nobody's gonna be ultra mad at the end of the day but oh yeah so something I noticed is that like you have a very similar dynamic so your dad brought something up I can't remember what it was but you immediately were like is it actually that or is it this and I do the same thing with my mom mm -hmm. except the difference is you were able to like just kind of drop it and let him keep going and i get i get upset oh, and yeah. it's like no hold on is that actually the case mm -hmm. um and then like with your mom you you do very light-hearted poking with your mom i get actually upset that my mom holds her views oh yeah i've given up on arguing with my parents about their shit a long time ago <laughs> which not... is healthy it's what i'm trying to get to is the point where it's like i recognize i can't control that i'm giving myself a necessary anxiety and frustration about it mm -hmm. why not just appreciate my mom for being my mom true Okay. Hello. What? I have something clever to talk about. Lycan may not. He may come to you for tech support. Mm -hmm. But I got content for you. Okay. What do you got for us, Chief? In uh, the conversation yesterday with Rem and oh Joe. Oh my God. Yeah, I think you were on the right track. And I think you got bullied away from your position that I think was correct. <clears throat> By the end of it, Rem gaslit you, dude. You fucking wait about what things are referring to. What's up? About what things are referring to? Uh, about like meaning and uh, um, meaning is usage. There was a thing that I wish I could have enunciated more. I wish he would have understood significant figures, but I got an email and then I thought about it more and there was a way better example that I could have used. I, here's something that I think happens sometimes. Ram, if you're listening, I'm so sorry. This is the closest I'm ever gonna come to shit talking you, okay? I'm not trying to shit talk you, but it really feels like when I'm saying things to Rem that he actually gets confused on the words and then we lose the concepts. And I, I think there are things that I'm saying that are good challenges or correct, but he either isn't understanding what I'm saying or we're just getting away from what's being said. I, and it drives me fucking crazy sometimes. Um, there, I got a really good email. Um, this, and it basically, this guy gave me an example that had to do with, um, it basically had to do with, it was a different way of doing my significant figures example. So like, let's say up here, um, this is an observation made in like zero BC. I'm gonna do totally arbitrary um, numberings on this guys, I'm sorry. Um, 1,500, um, or so we've got like zero, 1,000 AD. Arbitrary, you say? 1,500 you know AD, true, uh, 2,000 AD. If the guy up here, like all of these things refer to the actual thing that is like water, okay? But this guy here is like, oh, I drink this. And then this guy here is like, you know, fundamental building block of life, water. Then this guy here is like H2O. And then this guy here is like, oh, quantum mechanics. And then maybe in 2280 or whatever, we have like some, or we have like some other like, you know, hardcore thing. The idea that like all of these people are like necessarily referring to the same thing when they utter water is not true. I think there is, I think that, I do think I was correct when I said that water is actually in a way, it's like a homophone, but he just doesn't realize it. That water to this person actually means something different to this person, which actually means something different to this person, which actually means something different, even if they all think they're referring to the same thing. Um, I, mm. I, I, I feel that way, but go ahead. Okay, I have a different take on this. Go ahead. I think I think it can all be explained this simply, okay? Meaning of a word, the way that language works, language is a tool that we use to impart concepts that we have in our brain and try to relay them to other people. And there are basically two meanings to every anything that can be considered language, because it's not just words, right? Mm -hmm. Body motions can be language. There's language in all, all, all sorts of our behaviors, right? Mm -hmm. We have thoughts in our brain, and we use language 
um, to try to impart those thoughts to other people. And we hope that when we send a signal, um, they get it. And this they is like my the verbatim take. I don't know if you realize you're copying me, but yes, this is what I, yeah. No, I've thought about this for years. Okay, oh, okay. like this, yeah. is, this, is, this is my wheelhouse. Sure, okay. So, what, what Words are, are things that we utter in the hopes that we're invoking some thought in the mind of the other person that matches the thought in our own mind. Ex either. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So really, there's two meanings, right? There's the intent, and then there's the interpretation. Okay. And one thing that you questioned yourself on yesterday was whether or not you can have language with, uh, with one person. And Which yeah, you can. We can. No, you absolutely can. I Okay, disagree. we'll do a quick thought experiment. Everybody on Earth dies. You write your thoughts in a journal. Two weeks later, you come back and read those thoughts. Different, I think. How was it different? Um, okay, let's say people on Earth never existed at all. Or I'm sorry, let's say only one person ever existed. Sure. Would you create language? Now, whether or not language would form... Okay, so I guess in that abstract, you're saying if, if, um, you know, if nobody ever existed, maybe a person wouldn't conceive of a thing called language. Mm -hmm. I know that a person being uh, separated from society, there was that feral girl incident where like, her language center was completely stunted and it was basically impossible for her to learn language or whatever. Or she was able to learn very rudimentary language or something like that. But that, that can still be language. Mm -hmm. You can have language with a pet. As long as a command is understood in a certain way. As long as a signal is understood. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I don't know. I think you... It's pretty hard to test. I don't know if we've ever, like... It would be kind of an abusive experiment to run. To, like, raise somebody in isolation and fucking, like, see if they can come up with grunts and sounds that they... Okay, are we going to say that they could, like, mark a symbol on the ground maybe to stand for something later, right? Theoretically? Yeah, there you go. Okay, so I mark something on the ground, and in a way, that's, like, a symbol that symbolizes... Okay, wait, what was this going back to? Whether or not you need to a second party for, for there to be language. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we don't have to think okay. about that too much right now. Okay, yeah, go but ahead. I want to talk a little bit about how much I hate the water and H2O comparison. Mm -hmm. Because I think water to somebody a thousand years ago is the exact same to water somebody today. And I don't think that H2O and water are the same. I think Vosch got this horribly wrong uh, in his conversation as well. H2O is an explanation of, like a very granular explanation of how water exists at the microscopic level uh, through the language of chemistry. And even like, if, you, if I say H2O, the concept that's evoked to you is not the stuff that's in your cup, the stuff that you drink, the stuff that you take a bath with, the stuff that's in lake and waterfalls and so on, right? It's probably a diagram of the sorts of like the balls stuck together, right? Which you're quite familiar with, you live in Miami. Mm -hmm. You probably go outside and everyone's balls are stuck to everybody else's legs. Um, that's pro you know, like this is, a, this is a type of language that's used to describe like how matter is assembled. And even those diagrams are not really representative to how that matter exists. It's, that's like another type of language. It's another way to provide a concept to you for how this is like assembled and how these things interact at that level. But when you think about H2O, it's not the same as when you think about water. Any disagreement there? Um, it could be, sure. Like water is the word that we use to describe like how we interact with it at the human level, using our eyes, using our senses, right? It's like how we conceptualize this based on our sensory experience and how we apply it in daily life. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, the two worlds experiment that Rem brought up or whatever, mm -hmm. completely destroyed. And, you know, I only know a couple languages, right? And uh, even in, in like Chinese and Mandarin, for example, they might just use like shui, right? That's the word for water. Mm -hmm. And that's the word for liquid water. It's the word for H2O. Um, they have a different, they have a similar, you know, thing where they have to come up with a different phrase to describe the chemistry of water. Uh, but they also use the word water for basically lots of things that are liquids. Mm -hmm. Right? Like your saliva is koshue. Oh, somebody like emailed me this um, about um, Japanese. Wait, do you know any Japanese? Um, I can read a lot of Japanese because they end up using a lot of Chinese characters. But I, um, you know, I know the basics. It's probably the same words you know, bukkake, hentai. Mm -hmm. Somebody emailed me that in Japanese, there's like, apparently there's a saying, um, Watashi ha unagi des. I don't know how to pronounce that, but literally oh translates to. Are you to, a native speaker? True, wow, literally translates brilliant. to, I am an eel. Um, but apparently like this, like if you're in a restaurant talking to a waiter, it means I'll have an eel. It's not even ambiguous. But if you, uh, but if you say things like in other contexts, it'll mean something different or like apparently light, there's a lot of different ways to say this as well. Um, but yeah, yeah. He gave me an example of that too, that there's like, even like some other words. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Anybody who's, who's bilingual or speaks another language understands this perfectly mm -hmm. and you don't, it's not necessary. We can sort of like, we can get similar examples when we're just speaking between contexts or between like niche hobbies and shit like that mm -hmm. uh, in your own mother language. Uh, like how you've traveled quite a bit. How mm -hmm. often have you tried to learn how to say something and you say like, what's the word for this? What's the word for that? And then you try to put a sentence together and a native speaker goes like, 
I think we would be able to understand what you mean, but that's not really how we say it. That's not, if you wanted to get that same point across, you would use a completely different set of words. Um, yeah, for sure. Okay, I was gonna come up with some examples, but it's like, like if you say like how like if you would say like how old am I in Spanish, you'd think like well a verb like soy, uh -huh, which you're mean, like, quite so quite familiar true. with. Yeah, you would think like it, it must be soy or estoy because it's referring to like well I am, but that's but they don't really talk about age like that. They'll say that they have a certain number of years. So you'd be like then go sure, yeah, go. or whatever to say like I am 13 years old or something rather like that. But that means technically it means I have 13 years, but it doesn't translate directly something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, that works. That works. Or an example off the top of my head in Chinese, they'll say they'll use the word convenient for uh -huh. a lot of things and inconvenient for a lot of things, uh -huh. but they use them in a completely different way than we use them. Um, if you directly translate, there are some contexts where like the translation works okay, uh -huh. but they'll say something like, uh, you know, there'll, there'll be a sentence in Chinese where it's like, riding a bike is good for the environment, but it's inconvenient. When we say that something is inconvenient in English, it typically means that something is presenting an obstacle in our daily life. Like, ah, oh, fuck, man, I'm getting a call from work. I got to like go to work right now. I'm on my way home. This is so inconvenient. Okay. They would use inconvenient to sort of imply that there's a better tool for the job. There's like a better way to get this done. Okay. It's like not the handiest way to do something. Okay. I don't know. I think you might be able to come up with some uh, things. There are words that you can use in StarCraft or something like that. The StarCraft oh, yeah, might use. Yeah. Yeah, it might use certain words that are completely lost to other native English speakers. It evokes concepts that are just totally lost to native English speakers. Uh -huh. But it's an English word. Uh, Twitch, we do this, right? If something is poggers or, you know. Sure. Like, everybody knows what a pog well, is. Well, that's, but... yeah, those are the easy ones. It was more like if people use the same word to refer to something they have more specificity on later, are they always referring to the same thing? I thought that was an interesting... No, no, I would say that they're not. That's what it seems like. But even if they are actually referring to the same thing, are they, you know? For instance, so like the water thing. This was the email um, that I got. I'll just read this real quick because I thought it was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, Rem was driving me insane today. His, sorry, fuck. I shouldn't have closed, but Rem was driving me insane today. His pretentious tone combined with the severe inability to articulate his position had me screaming at my monitor. I'm extremely inept when it comes to the subject, but I think I can safely say that this guy is in a bad place on the Dunning-Kruger curve. Anyways, I wanted to share a shower thought on how to defeat this words refer to fundamental truths bullshit. Rem is claiming that every time the caveman says the word water, he actually means H2O in box number three, which he views as a fundamental truth. If you pressed him on this, I imagine he would say, well, okay, maybe there's still some stuff to figure out about quantum physics, and we're all actually using the word water wrongly right now. He would then argue the word is still referring to the fundamental truth of the matter that we don't even have any conception of yet. He would traverse all the way down this pillar past 20th century chemistry and physics, past our latest quantum discoveries, and past whatever other discoveries could possibly be made. In this chain of discoveries, if this chain of discoveries does actually end, he would say that the final box is what all of humanity has been referring to throughout history. Whatever it is at the end of the line, that's what I'm talking about. Now, I think you actually can make a reference to this abstract idea of a perfect understanding of water. The problem is, Rem is claiming that every time someone uses the word water, they are making a reference to the final box. He says that they mean the perfect idea of water. Rem would say that every time the caveman makes a reference to box number one, which is water, a thing I drink to stay alive, he is actually making a reference to the final box. I think this is retarded. I think you can reference any box individually without being forced to refer to the final box, even if you gave him the most generous definition of means. Rem still loses here. I don't know why saying it would have lost whatever but i don't know if this helps you at all but it sure felt nice to get my shower thoughts on paper and i thought this was an interesting way to put it so like box one is like water is the thing i drink to stay alive two is water is a fundamental building block of the something three is the truth water is h2o and that's it we've hit bedrock four is jk they're actually smaller particles that make up the hydrogen and oxygen that make up water five is an infinite number of further discoveries about physics I don't think it's fair to say that the caveman referring to box one here is always referring to this like box all the way at the very, 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 very bottom, especially because box one can include other things that aren't water. So for instance, if you go to a lake and you collect water, it's not just water. There's water, there's bacteria, there's all sorts yes. of other things going on yes. in there, right? Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is basically, this reminds me of fucking like Plato first form shit and like metaphysics. And dude, it drives me crazy when philosophy people try to solve linguistic stuff because they, they end up asking you to, they end up doing all these crazy thought experiments and asking you to take all these things for granted. Mm -hmm. Like there's a final form of water or whatever the hell. Like the biggest, I feel like the biggest conundrum there is, I think that's, isn't that sort of one of Hegel's things is that we can basically never know, we can never actually, or is that a hermeneutic? I can't remember. I, tr I tried talking to perspective philosophy about this. Mm -hmm. But talking to philosophy people about this stuff is just like playing motherfucking Yu-Gi-Oh for philosophers, like history. It's like, you, they can't, I can never understand anything that they're talking about because they just speak in names. Sure. You know? 
fucking Rem, if you if you ask him to engage with the concept, he'll just be like, well, I can't really explain this because you haven't read Figgles McBiddlesworth 1854 paper on the double-sided upside-down pooper scooper conundrum or whatever. It's mm-hmm. like, bro, just fucking engage with a practical example. Give me a fucking break. Um, I think it's even it's it's basically as far from Rem's conception of this as possible, which is that everybody has their own concept. Like, the way that everybody interacts with the... If anybody's going to have answers on this, it's going to be fucking, like, neuroscientists, right? It's going to come through neuroscience and how we even come to form the ones and zeros of how we come to form the concepts and images of these things. And I think, basically, our understanding right now is is, um, is probably something along the lines of that, like, depending on, you know, the how your neural pathways form, you're probably going to have a pretty unique conception of this on some level uh, compared to everybody else. Like, there's no guarantee that everybody's brain comes to the same way of understanding these things as, as the next person. Maybe. Yeah. Do you think he actually left, or do you think he just... Sorry, I just like doing that. Did you have other thoughts? Um, no, I think... I think that's all I got. Do you have any other all right, thoughts? Well, don't fucking let Rem bully you and try, and try and wow you. I heard you talking earlier about how when somebody starts using specialized terms, you kind of oh, go to take shit. the back seat. That can go two ways, you know? Enjoying somebody can... Them. No, yeah, I know. Can you be, can obfuscate sometimes, yeah. They could be like... Uh, one analogy I like is they're like Mickey Mouse and Fantasia, where the fucking... The wizard leaves, mm-hmm. and you got the apprentice playing with the master's tools and just, like, making a fucking mess of everything. Mm-hmm. That's the... That's the, uh, the idea I get sometimes when I hear people that are like... They reach the master's level, or they reach, like, their four-year level of a given discipline, and then they want to, like, profess to everybody. Sure. What's up? What do you guys want? I want to ask one thing why was there so much focus on this water analogy i don't understand why wait we would on what analogy water good one analogy. Well, you did it on purpose never mind um the i'm idea- sorry for being british okay i can't help it it's a mental <laughs> illness okay nice you got a cure for it if you don't then shut up okay um, i mean we tried to cure it a couple hundred really- years ago but that didn't you know that Water's- actually worked pretty well it's just an available thing that everybody, you know, it's like yeah, pretty but... close to things you no, can reach the, out. No, the, the idea knows. was um, we were trying to figure out that when people say something, like what what is it that they actually mean? This has been like a big point of contention on my stream a lot. Like what but do people like mean when they say things? There's like two dictionary definitions for Nazi. I don't think it's as complicated as this is maybe being made out to be. Okay, a Hold dictionary on. Stop. is just... This is so easy to solve in two seconds. Kelly, what do you think a Nazi is? I can read you the many de- no, no, dictionary no, 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 definitions that are all the fucking same. <laughs> I, for, so one, I'm going to give you a spoiler alert. You're wrong. But number two, I'll ask you because you so probably... So all the dictionaries are wrong too. Just listen to the explanation. I'm just going to call Oxford and Cambridge now and tell them they're wrong. Okay, so... Because the internet man told me so. Kelly, what do you think the dictionary would say if you were to look up literally? What do you mean? I can just do that. Yeah, so go ahead and look up literally in the dictionary and tell me what you find, okay? We're going to learn all about prescriptive Why? versus descriptive. Well, because if you look up literally in the dictionary, it's going to say, well, another use for literally is figuratively. Why does this matter? Because the idea that language is this static, unchanging thing is not true. That's not how we engage with language. No, and that does, just because I said there's only two definitions doesn't mean I don't think there's any room for a little bit of interpretation. Sure. But I well, don't think so it's as expansive as you guys are trying to make it out That's to what be, I was right? trying to prove when I asked you what is Nazi. Because if I were to ask you what a Nazi is, you're probably going to give me a whole bunch of different things. There's only two definitions. But you it don't... can't be that ridiculous. The meaning of any like, word is infinitely expansive. This is not like the word love, for example, which has like multiple no no first of all how many wait if i were to ask you what love means would you tell me there's three definitions in the dictionary i haven't looked up the definition of love but i know that in a lot of languages there are many many words for the same thing okay the problem is going to the dictionary the first uh, okay (laughs) hold on okay i just don't think water was a good example to like what compare nazi to it's it's just a weird it's okay comparison there are thousands of definitions for the word Nazi. That's the issue. Literally. In every dictionary, there's two. What are all the others? What are all the others? What am I missing? Okay. Man, my English stop. teacher's a Nazi. Please. Stop, stop. Which definition am I using right there? Oh, what What's about the meaning the, of Nazi? The disapproving, insulting one. Okay, so because, is that what it wait, is? That's, that's not even, wait, that's not even... Disapproving and insulting of an English teacher? That's not even in, is the, that dictionary. One in the dictionary. 
Who says disapproving as an insult? Yeah. Okay, disappro a disapproving insult. Is that what's in the dictionary for Nazi? Is that one of those two definitions? Yeah, disapproving. A disapproving insult? Is that the definition? Is that one yeah, of two? Yeah, it says disapproving. Wait, where? What? I'm looking at the Oxford Dictionary, the Cambridge Dictionary. No, 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 hold on. You can't be looking at both at the same time. There's one... They're really similar. I don't know, man. They're both British, so they don't. Wait, really is that? Are matter. those the two definitions of Nazi? We came like... up with a fucking language, right? Jesus Show us Christ! Some respect. <laughs> okay, no, it's disapproving, using power in a cruel way, having extreme and unreasonable views, especially racist or anti-Semitic views. Having extreme and unreasonable views. Okay, if this is the definition you want to use for Nazi, we can describe probably like half the planet as being Nazis. But mm? speak for yourself. And you know what, Kelly God. Jean? Uh, Kelly Jean, you know what? Kelly Jean, no, please go to your neighbor's house anyway. before you speak in your microphone. Yeah, Second off, wait, wait, wait. You're you're being a Nazi right now. No, no, about wait, this hold term. on. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Having extreme and unreasonable I'm, views. I'm, if some, let's say somebody says, "I'm never going to wear my seatbelt because I think that if I wear my seatbelt, it's going to increase the chance of me getting in an accident." That's an unreasonable view, right? It's a pretty extreme view too. They would be a Nazi by this definition. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm looking at the Cambridge Dictionary, it says extreme and unreasonable beliefs about race, as an example. Okay, I looked up the Oxford mm. one because you said Oxford or Cambridge. Can you link in the oh, chat Oxford which- here as well. And Oxford mentions that as well. It says especially racist or anti-Semitic. Especially, but not only. Do you know what especially means? You reading the sentence. Kelly, what does especially mean oh, here? You're being pedantic. You're uh, driving me crazy. Okay, you can do this no, one, Supreme. She's trolling, or she's drunk. I'm not trolling. Are you drunk? I do think no, I'm not drunk. I'm just look, still trying to do You're just a me. fucking spurg? Is that is that really an upgrade? <laughs> okay, I'm a little bit spurgy, <laughs> alright? But Wait, Aspergy not... or What? I'm well, just... I'm neurodivergent, so a bit spurgy. Okay. But I don't care. It's fine. Is this like a Larry David I'm on the spectrum? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have a diagnosis. Okay. I don't know why I would lie about that. <laughs> Thank you for your service. I don't know. I, I feel like <laughs> well, there's like something you're supposed to the say. Edge. <laughs> My service. Okay. But anyway. Okay. If I say to Steven, you're wasting if, your time, and you're gonna trigger if, the fuck out of me if you guys try to have this argument intentionally. She's not here in good faith. I wouldn't just do this. take the free what content. Do you mean not here Jesus. Oh god. You're gonna I'll be get honest. I have no. I have missed out some of the. Uh... No, no, it has nothing to do with so, you missed. Everything you've said so far is already unimaginably fucking retarded. And I can't tell if you're engaging with it in good faith or if you're just like here to fucking troll. I'm assuming you're here to troll and you're not actually as stupid as you're pretending to be. That you're, that you're. I mean, I believe that all words can have uh, varying amounts of any meaning. Infinite. Yeah, okay. But th that's just, I feel like that's uh, ex an exaggeration to imply. Wait, not an exaggeration. When, you, when you say, when you say, when you say, hold on. Nazi. There's like a couple. No, there's literally names. thousands. If I ask you, thousands. For, Kelly, how do you learn language? What do you mean? I go to school, like everyone else. No. You, oh, okay. <laughs> that could be true. That well, could be true. Stop, shut the fuck up. Did you learn language in school? <laughs> Is that where you learned all of your words? You didn't know how to fucking speak until you got to school. I didn't know how to say much. I was like three. I was the youngest in my year. You couldn't speak at three years old. You didn't know any words until you went to school, and that's I where you learned how to. Words. They were mostly for things that I wanted and knowing yes. Okay. Mom, dad. So how do you learn language in school? By socializing with other kids yes. and learning English Correct. and books. Yes. No, not by learning language in books. You learn words by people speaking words and by you associating those with things in your environment. That's how you mm, learn language. I became verbose because I read a lot. I definitely uh, okay, okay, I'm good. I'm done. I can't. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I can't or I'm going to lose my fucking mind. <sighs> okay, you guys is, have it. Is what? Was that a bad thing to say? Can people not learn differently? Could you learn language by only reading books? Um, I think you would need at least a little bit more than that, yeah. How do you learn but what a word in a book basics. means? Uh, we used to do those tests at school. A and then test is testing what off. you've learned. Let's say that I show you the word kuchump, okay? And you read that in a book. How are you gonna know what that word means? Well, you learn the letters first, right? So that's how you... Okay, it's K-O-O-C-H-O-O-M-P. Kuchump. How do you know what that word means when you read it in a book? Um, it will be related to something else. And let's say it's related to a 
Boompone. B-O-O-M-P-O-N-E. <laughs> How do you know what a boompone is? I don't know. The teacher tells me if I don't fucking know. Okay, teacher tells know. you a boompone is a thing. <laughs> Hold on, wait. Bro, what? how bad we are teachers. The answer to the question, it's not, this isn't up for debate. It's not, we haven't even gotten to the part of the conversation yet. Children and human beings learn language by having people speak things and then associating with them in their environments. They don't go to school and learn how to fucking talk. That's, that, that is not true in the UK or for you or for anybody else in the world. I don't know why you would even say something like that. Oh, well, I, the way that I learned words was by going to school and reading books. That's not true. You're not fucking reading books at three years old that's teaching you all of the language. You learn things because your parents are talking okay, to you, people okay, are talking okay, to you, okay, and okay. you're associating with things in your environment. That's how every single human being learns how to speak. That's how we all learn language. I learned things from multiple different places. I didn't I'm ask if you learned things from multiple different I'm places. Saying I'm saying the general practice of language can be learned. Are there people that know how to speak that can't read, Kelly? Are there people that know how to speak? Yeah, sure. How do they learn how to speak? How do they learn language if they can't you read? You asked me how I learn. Okay, I, I, yeah, I didn't know you were going to lie to me, okay? Or you weren't aware of how you learn language. So I'll try to ask it in a little bit more of a pointed way. How do people learn to speak if they can't read? From other people or other by associating with things like around them. My yes. brother's first little word, my little brother's first little word was CBBC because he watched a lot of television. Sure. So you learn about things around you. So if that's the mm. case, when we try to figure out what do words mean, we wouldn't. Uh, the dictionary, all the dictionary is doing is it's writing down how people use words. It's not telling you how to use the word. It's just writing down how the word is used. A dictionary okay, is recording. Like no, there's a more specific way you can do this, Destiny. That's going to be confusing. It's, that's exactly what it is. People use language in a certain way, and eventually the conventions of language are recorded, sometimes in things like dictionaries, and people will write down, oh, this is a word, and it means this, because this is how it's used. Language changes over time, but ultimately we don't go to dictionaries to learn words. Dictionaries record words that are used by people. Hey, well, hey, let but me doesn't give you, let that me give just you. doesn't that just mean that you're saying that dictionaries have already recorded the most common no. usages? Yes, of they the could. Word. They could record common so usages of words, but there are tons of other usages as well. Because hey, there are tons of other usages as well. Sorry, go ahead. Right, let me, go ahead let, me, yes. let me let me let me add, add clarity. Let me just Kelly. Um, when okay. you were you start school at five in England, right? I assume uh, similar to. I was to... really young because I'm the youngest in my year, so I was three, four is normal. What? Okay. The point is, is that even at, at three years old, right? You you watched cartoons. You had conversations with your mom and dad, right? Right. Sure. Okay. Cool. So before you ever got near a book, before any sort of pictures were put in front of you and people were talking to you from a teacher's perspective, you understood things like good and bad and pain and all these things from life experience and you knew the words you knew ouch that hurt right and you knew what yeah. hurt meant okay like you what, don't just need pictures uh, like well, a, right a you feeling can be a, exactly you know, so you yeah. you just gathered these from people around you using language and telling you how to describe that soft dog is soft cat is soft rock hard things like that those concepts you just get them so the point is, is that yes while you get to school to learn a lot more more quickly, etc. you still are constantly learning shit from the world around you. So when someone says, yeah, what is the definition? Okay, so when someone says, what is the definition of a Nazi? Or what is the definition of anything? More often than not, most people don't need to jump to a, a dictionary to get that definition. They have an idea. Now, some people suck at articulating it, but they're going to have an idea. Would you agree with that? Yeah, sure. Okay, that is Destiny's point. Is okay. that is that I wasn't when, coming out here to disagree with that. Well, wait. So when wait, someone, you are when coming says, out here to wait, disagree. Hold on, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. So when he says, "What is your definition of a Nazi?" He doesn't want to hear you run to the dictionary and tell him what it means. There, he wants because it's important to know what you would describe a Nazi as. How would you describe it? And then he says, "Your definition is going to be wrong." It's because in his experience, most people that do describe Nazi don't do it in an accurate way, where they have such varied definitions because of other shit that he's talked about so without talking about a definition he would very much like you to try to articulate what you believe a nazi is um but then i'm just gonna get called bad faith because i know he's not gonna call if you bad. Not so, no, if yes not if you literally about... just read off what you just read yes but if you kind of just try to describe it without using the words you just read in the dictionary i don't think he's gonna call you bad faith okay but so assuming we're not talking about a literal nazi because we're not um, well, are we? I don't know. What does no, Nazi we are. Mean? No, in, in the context <laughs> oh, of this conversation, two different things. 
Oh, well, hold on. So now we've got two entirely different things I can refer to before we even get into the definitions. There's two. Oh, there's like two. Oh, so many. Car up my head around that. So there are, so are there only two many. things that a Nazi can refer to? I never said that there can't be any differentiation in the second one. I, okay, I so what is your. So if somebody says some... Jonathan is a Nazi, what does that mean to you? I would have to know the context. Um. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, like. <laughs> Assuming he's not really old, <laughs> then it could be both okay, of them. Then that's know. my whole point. What did you come here to argue with me about? It's only two things. It's not that difficult. It's not just oh, two things. You know. Okay, let's say that no. I say, let's say I say Jonathan is a, he's an online political commentator and I think he's a Nazi. What does it mean now? I would need to know more information because like knowing what someone thinks, but I mean, oh, they would mean the second one because. What is the second one? What does that mean? Uh, the disapproving one. The one that's more of an insult. An insult? <laughs> there is no insult. positive definition of a Nazi. <sighs> yeah, there's no positive Nazi, right? But what I don't get is why... Well, Lauren know. Southern's a positive Nazi, but that's people, people only in my People were heart. really, really <laughs> happy and easy to go around saying feminazi for a long time. And I still hear people say that, and we don't really seem to care. But when it comes to saying a Nazi is in someone that might be fascist in some of their views, for some reason, this seems to be... Okay, firstly, I'll use Nazi as an insult because it's funny. Like, I would use feminazi as an insult because it's funny. You will That's never right. find me seriously describing somebody's political views as, Oh, her? She's a feminazi. That's only a word I would ever use as an insult. Same thing with Nazi. Words can be used for different things, but I'm not going to use it to accurately describe somebody's political views. I mean, it is, it's disapproving, yeah. It's always kind of an insult, whether it's meant as a light yeah, but I don't, I'm not, insult I, there's or tons like a of, serious insult. It's, yeah, but I don't, why would I use really? it? But yeah, sure, that's my whole, that's, this is my whole argument, that when the word Nazi is used, people are pretending that you're having a serious, like, engagement with a person's political views, but you're not. You're just, just usually just used as an insult. That's my point of view. Yeah, I mean, I don't have an issue with that. Like, I think it's more that I don't understand why, uh, you are that reticent to consider it in this situation. I because the issue is that if I'm trying to have an accurate conversation with somebody or an empathetic one, one of the most important parts of being empathetic is to understand their point of view. And if I'm using a word that has a lot of different definitions attached to it or could ascribe political beliefs they don't have, the other person is going to feel like I'm not understanding their point of view, which inhibits uh, my ability to communicate with them. Just for reference, I don't mean like you shouldn't like directly go scream it at him. No, I didn't say directly scream. I'm just saying that there's it does, if we all <laughs> can agree really that there's a yeah. million different definitions for Nazi, it's probably not very useful when it comes to describing somebody's political point of view. Sure, but uh, it's less about how you would speak to Fuentes, for example, and it's more like how you are, like, when referring to him to your own audience, right? Because clearly a lot of them seem to have a very different opinion on this. I have no... Pr I, I'm not the one that's, like, super worked up over it. They are. So I have to, I have to respond to their worked upness. I mean, you banned quite a lot of people. You must have been a little bit annoyed. Because they were the ones that were emotional. If somebody asks me, like, oh, would you refer to him as a Nazi? I'd go, like, um, no, probably not. And then they would go, would you have to call a Nazi? And then I would say, you're really fucking annoying. It's like, oh, you're being emotional. No, I'm responding to their um, obsession with it, not mine. I don't care I mean, that I much one way like or another. I feel like that's an emotional response to an emotional response. Okay, like, if you want to say I'm having a mo an emotional response to their emotional response, you can say that. But I'm not having an emotional response to the word Nazi. I'm pretty indifferent no, towards the label that somebody's yeah, given. Sure. So Okay, but, so that's fair. Yeah, if you want to say you're having an emotional response to their emotional responses, sure. You must understand where they're coming from, though, right? Yeah, a place of ignorance, which is why I push back against it. <laughs> but they almost never agree with Mr. Girl, and yet here we are. So, I don't know. It's being very weird. Is that supposed to be, like, an argument for something, or...? No, well, I mean... Is that supposed to influence I mean, my thoughts one way or another? Like, oh, well, they agreed with I Mr. Girl, so maybe I'm wrong. It's just an interesting observation. I don't she know. just wants equality. It's dude. not a neutral observation, though. You're clearly positing it as though it supports. Why your is it argument. interesting? Oh, this is interesting. You don't Why? think it's interesting? Uh, well, if something is interesting, mean it's it means it's probably breaking from a norm. So she's implying that the norm is that we never agree with Mr. Girl. So if there is something where my community agrees with them and I disagree with them, that's an interesting thing to point out because normally it's the other way around. My community disagrees with them and I might be defending them. So. Hmm. So like, so uh, to the rest that I've been listening to, for example, yeah. 
what I seem to get the impression of is not oh, as much the definition of words as maybe you think it is, but I, you mentioned it initially when you start talking about labeling. I feel like that is more the thing that you have the issue with, right? Is the labeling. If it's incorrect, yes. Yeah. Um, but so, so, um, it's not just if it's incorrect, right? It's but absolutely. It's if somebody can correctly label things and everybody understands the label, I usually don't have a problem with that. Well, the thing with labels is almost nobody fits perfectly into that box, right? Mm, no, I'm a human. Well, you're a you're woman. You're making a really good I'm argument. I'm a streamer. You shouldn't you're, I'm a YouTuber. Um, I have a car outside. I live in an apartment. Um... This is a bottle next to me. There's tons of no, labels there. No, no, no. There. I mean, like, ideologies specifically, because, like, for example, there's about 20 mm, nope. types of I'm, feminism. like, I adhere to liber- Oh. Interesting. Perhaps, when it comes to ideologies and the way that we use these labels or identify on the internet, there is a huge plethora of beliefs. That could be true. In which case, the word Nazi could have, theoretically, 10,000 different meanings, which was the first thing out, that I said I'm in this conversation. Gotcha on I know, but you I... came in here saying Nazi has two <laughs> meanings, and now you're saying, well, you know, feminism could have 20 different things as part of it, uh, yeah. which I agree We're with. We're not talking about word meanings now. We're talking about labeling. I'm very interested in Labeling labeling. and word meanings are all the same thing. I did labeling theory at sociology, okay? It's all, it's it's all, it's all but it's all the same. Mm, disagree. It's a little bit more to it, labeling theory. Uh, wait, but how? The, the reason why it's interesting. Wait, wait how is it yeah. different? Uh, so labeling specifically is a. Uh, it's like a, the negative connotations that you're like applying with it. Uh, it, it, it. When you give someone. Uh, uh, I'm trying to put out how to describe how the difference is. Uh, there is a difference. Leg labeling can be positive as well as it can be negative, right? Sure, so can normal words. Yes, but words usually tend to be very much like, well, there's no positive Nazi, is there? You can't be like, ah. Uh, yeah, but I don't understand. Words and labels can have the exact same feeling. There's no positive Nazi, right? Is there a positive rapist? Is there a positive murderer? Is there a positive thief? Well, is there a positive so scoundrel? Like Labeling can change over time, right? So like mentally ill, for example, is like a particularly one that was used to be heavily stigmatized and now we change how we feel about it and sort of I don't like, that's not uh, responding to anything I'm saying. I'm saying that both labels and words can have negative or positive normative associations with them. That is the case. For instance Normally, but there's no positive side to Nazi. What Who said there was? What is that for anything I'm saying? Oh, you just said there's usually positive and negative words. I said there could be positive or negative normative associations with a word. So, for instance, sometimes women on certain subreddits, and it's fair, will get triggered when men refer to women as females. That's correct, but female has kind of a weird detached sense, whereas woman seems to imply more like human rights or equal treatment under the like law in a way. So there's like there's normativity associated with both of those words, even if both are accurate descriptors. She's a female or she's a woman, but they feel a lot different. Yeah. Um, it would be t dependent on the context in which it's used. That's my, I agree, one million percent. Words are always it's dependent on context. It's not that I don't yes. disagree with everything you're saying. It's more that I'm trying to just understand the root of uh, the discontent in general. I'm not coming in here with bad faith. As I say, I have missed a bit here and there. Sure, but you're coming in with some pretty I big statements. I am genuinely statements. interested. You're triggering the fuck out of me, okay? All I'm saying is that I don't like using... <laughs> political labels because okay. when somebody brings a political label in there's a whole bunch of baggage that i've lost control over and now when people are using certain words i don't know what everybody means and i don't know how everybody's interpreting things so i'd rather just not do it what are you worried that people mean when they say nazi assuming not literal nazi what what additional connotations are you worried about that's associated with the word the word Nazi could mean a hundred thousand different things. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, I'm just wondering what your concerns are. Um, it could apply some level of paganism, of, of anti-Christianity or anti-religiosity. Um, that could be one thing. It could imply an obsession with the Aryan race. Um, these are like more traditional um, understandings of Nazis. It could refer specifically only to people um, that were part of the Nazi Socialist Party in Germany, the National Socialist Party in Germany. In, yeah, in the I, mean, I meant the non-literal. 
So, so well, I'm just saying these are all these. All of these are in the. It could just refer to a person I don't like. It could refer to a person who voted for Donald Trump. It could refer to a person who's pro Blue Lives Matter. It could refer to a person that posts a lot on 4chan. It could refer to a person who um, uses anti-Semitic humor. Um, it could refer to a person that uh, identifies as a fascist or a Christian nationalist. It, like it could refer to all sorts of different things. Um. So like. Okay, so I feel like there's been a lot of discussion about why people think Fuentes is a Nazi. What, what, what reasons do you think that he isn't one? Which, what, what things do you think make you wonder and sit there and think? Oh, it's not. It's not whether or not he is or isn't one. It's that to invoke the word Nazi, you're already playing dangerous games, and I'd rather not invoke the term. By the time you've asked I'm me, I'm not saying you should call him that. By the way, no, 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 I'm just hold on. I'm just trying what... to. I'm trying to make you understand the complicatedness of your question. Okay. When you say, I don't think it's that complicated. There must be something in him that you well, see that makes explain. you think. I don't think he's a Nazi. Jesus. When you're, you're asking the question, what is it about calling him a Nazi that bothers you? And that part, why does it bother you? That's not the part of the sentence that is difficult. The part of the sentence is, why won't you call him a Nazi? Or what is it about calling somebody a Nazi or whatever? The calling them a Nazi, the problem is that that word Nazi encompasses so many different beliefs and ideas, some of which are inherently contradictory. So the invocation of that term introduces a lot of complexity and confusion, and sometimes normative baggage, that I don't want to deal with. So I don't want to call anyone a Nazi, Nick or anybody uh, else, I, unless I I'll do it as like a joke. Why, I already know why you don't want to call people Nazis. I want to know why specifically you feel like there's like enough room of error, like error to consider that he isn't one. I, I well, if you know, know why I don't want to call people Nazis, and the set of all people is A, Nick is a part Answer of that set. Answer the question, you slippery bastard. Yeah, there must be something. Some good quality in him that you see. That you're no, like, you, you, what you're that. doing right now is exactly why I don't like it. It's not, it has nothing to do with good or bad qualities. I don't think a Nazi is intrinsically good or bad. You have to build out some ethical thing sure. in order to get to like why Nazis something is good or bad. In the war. No, no, it's just Nazi is a description of a political belief. That, like, that's all it is. I don't think a liberal is inherently good or bad, or a communist is inherently good or bad. Like, I try not to normatively load these words, or, or like a capitalist or whatever. Just Nazi is a description of, like, some set of political ideas. And I might call some of those political ideas, if I evaluate them on an ethical level, I might say they're bad. So, believe, like, racial superiority, I would say, is probably bad. Or I would say that, like, these different, like, underlying beliefs are bad. But the term itself, I just want to refer to, like, I just wanted to refer to, like, specific political ideologies. Sure, but you're giving me reasons uh, of what a Nazi is. I'm, I'm asking you for the reasons of why he might not be one. Uh, I don't even. You, I don't know what you mean when you, you say Nazi. When you something. say, why might he not be a Nazi? I'm telling you that in the question, I don't know what you mean by Nazi. It's already a really complicated question. Oh, let's go by the dictionary definition. Why? Why? What do you I, think? Uh, I, I, I don't. That it would make him not fit. If you want to ask me if he has some specific set of characteristics, I can answer yes or no to that. But I, but nobody uses the dictionary definitions for words in political discourse. That's not well, how. Apparently, I do. That's great. You're just not involved <laughs> in political discourse, I guess. I don't know what you want me to no, say. No, not really. Then. But I am here asking a question that you won't answer. Th because the question is meaningless. <laughs> No, it's not meaningless. I'm asking you, what do you think there is about Fuentes that makes you think, I don't know, I'm not sure that he's a Nazi because of this or that. It must be one thing. It, do you not think that his views on some things are extreme enough? He has some very extreme views, yeah. So, anything? A anything what? Anything? That you can think of? Uh, Not even one thing? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what... I don't know how to make you understand the futility of the question. It's not It's not futile at all. If it's difficult to answer, then it's probably worthwhile to answer. It's, it's difficult to answer because I reject the formulation of the question. Oh, I can give you the definition of what I feel is Nazi. Okay, you give me your definition of Nazi, and I'll tell you if I feel like he would... Um, adhere to that definition. If you want to do that, we can do that. Go ahead. Sure. Someone that has racist, sexist, homophobic, white nationalist, white supremacist type of views. All of those Weird. or any of those or some s collection of those? Um, I think that to get Nazi, you'd have to hit the majority, but definitely not all. You wouldn't have to hit all. G give like, me a number. How many of how thing. many? Like, there's probably gay Nazis out there, you know? Even well, not, I mean, it depends on war. what you mean. A gay Nazi is in fucking Auschwitz getting gassed. I don't know what you mean by... I mean, I just said that. You just repeated. Okay, so I don't, so you're, you're, 
you're asking me and then I'm asking for a definition and even within the definition you're giving me, you're already making exceptions. So it just sounds like a really like dog no, I shit. Said you can hit most of them. You don't have to hit all of them. Okay, how, what does most of them mean? How many do I need to hit? Mm, the majority. So over half? <laughs> yeah. Kelly, were the that. Confederates Nazis? She did, do you know? I don't know. If she I'm British. I don't care about this. So, so like when we did our Civil War, we had people that I fought in the in South for uh, slavery. Europe, you know, we didn't learn about the actual Nazis. What? What? Not weird American shit. They probably don't learn a lot about American Civil War. That'd be my guess. You, it had an ugly flag, and it was very stupid. That was about it. Do you think Jordan Peterson is a Nazi? No, he's just an average conservative with very... Do you think Ben Shapiro is a Nazi? Don't really know enough about Ben Shapiro to care. Do you think Donald Trump is a Nazi? No, he just likes money. So what of these, of the definition you gave me, what parts does Donald Trump not satisfy? Um, I don't know. I don't really care about Donald Trump. Wait, can you look at it and just tell me? Just look at it. You said it was an easy question. Uh, no, like I, I know all of this stupid shit that Fuentes has said recently because it's been a huge list of it, but I haven't looked up the stupid shit that Donald Trump has said recently. Cause Who even just paid attention him. to Donald Trump anyway, right? True. He's just, yeah, but he's, yeah. Politicians in general, I just see as clowns. Okay. What, do know. you know anything about like David Cameron or any of your British stuff or <laughs> James Corbin or any Boris of these guys? Johnson, he's gone. Boris I mean, Johnson. Did you think some... Boris Johnson was a Nazi? We had some... Mm, no, he's just like trump light. But if you know he's trump light, then you must know some shit about Trump. <laughs> She's probably heard the term trump light before. Uh, why does no one ask my questions? I only ask one question and I still don't get an answer from Because it. I'm trying to tell you how complicated Instead the question is. Instead you're trying is. to like quiz me about politicians that I haven't read anything up on forever. I'm just trying to show you that the question is difficult. Then you shouldn't have come in so hot. Like you did I come in hot. I'm coming hot. I'm just he, British. Yes. No, you're he here to try and mad. dunk. You're here to try she and dunk. I'm and not being here a to literal dunk. You were looking bro. for dunks. No, 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 you were no, no, a debate no. bra. I'm not. You were a hundred percent. Admit it. I'm not a bro. No, you were a debate bra. Debate braing me. No, <laughs> you're a debate bra. Yeah, actually, UK, you're a debate bro. You're a. Uh, you're an avoiding the question, <laughs> bruv. Oh, look, went for another debate. That's my question. I don't. I, I don't even know how to engage with your question. That's the whole point. I, I just told you what my definition of a Nazi was, and then I said as long as they hit the majority of those things, then The yeah. problem is your and definition you applies to way more sure. I would say, given you what you said there, probably yes, I think, if I remember what you, you said correctly. You think that most people are like white supremacists, white nationalists, racist, <laughs> I didn't say most homophobic, people. Racist, sexist. homophobic, sexist, yes. What were the other ones? White nationalists, nope. white supremacists. Nope. But you have three of them there, so three of five is the majority. So there's probably a is lot of people. The majority in the... of people. Like I didn't that. say majority, but there's probably over a billion people at least. Yeah, maybe two billion around the world that are homophobic, sexist, and racist. Yeah, absolutely easy. Uh, that's concerning. You don't think so? Um, I think that some people. Uh, there's a decent amount of people that are ignorant, especially the. If we go to the Middle East, really do you think most people there might be sexist or homophobic or racist, or do you think that's not the case? <sighs> or feel like their people are the best people? Certainly the laws are. Okay. But well. I feel I feel uncomfortable saying like an like a, I've not been there. I don't know the culture of the people. It seems a little bit unfair for me to guess the statistical amount of how much is or isn't of the behavior as a society. It seems kind of fucked. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Also, I don't. I don't want to speak from ignorance. You know, like I'm ignorant. <laughs> we don't. We haven't even given a specific country, or you know, like I don't know. Okay. <sighs> we can guess, but that's not useful. That's just ignorance to ignorance. Uh, we don't learn shit. Okay. Anyway. True. Never answered my question. I did answer your question. I said, based yeah. on what you just read, I said yes. Okay. Interesting. It's not interesting at all. You give an incredibly broad definition. It was an insanely broad definition. Is it that broad? Yes. I think it probably includes billions of people on the planet. Huh. I even included more than the dictionary said. Interesting. Do you think you... Okay. All right. I mean, there were a lot of Nazis, you know? No. Not really. A lot of people were complicit with the Nazis. 
Well, that's quite a lot of people. When you say a lot of people, like as a percentage of the population of the planet, or? During World War II, I mean, literally. Well, no, not literally. <laughs> the, most, of the, most of the people in Europe weren't Nazis. I'm saying there was a lot, not that there was a majority of Nazis. There are a lot of people that are complicit and didn't do shit, you know? Well, sure. I mean, I you probably don't want to get murdered by your government. It's probably a hard thing sometimes, I imagine. Those are difficult choices. Yeah. I don't know. There's a difference between uh, being complicit and uh, uh, standing up and being some kind of a... Hero. Well, it's not if like it most of the people in World War II were part of the SS, right? A lot of them were probably just in the German military. Yeah, you're correct that there is a difference between the German military and the SS. Yes. Okay, aside from that, if a terrorist busts into your place of work and says, don't fucking move or I'm going to shoot you in the head, if you obey him, does that make you a terrorist? Because you're not, like, actively fighting him? That's a silly question. <laughs> <laughs> you got you're dumpstered. Complicit. Sorry, Wicked. You just got fucking annihilated. Fucking moron. No! You got no, you're being complicit. You're being complicit with the terrorists, right? Accept, Does that make you a terrorist? You won't accept how destroyed you got, guys. I mean, I would probably just choose to die anyway. I don't care that much. Same. Oh, so you're, you're oh my so god. Complicit. Oh my god. You're you got so complicit that crushed. you'll just let them kill you. You're the biggest terrorist. You're Obama bin Laden. I don't think that's how that works, buddy. I, I'm using your I'm using your terms. No, I'm pretty sure that was a logical fallacy, actually. So. Uh, actually, I think it was a slippery, slippery strongman. <laughs> Spoke. You think you can still have a debate? Oh, I see. You've never heard of the slippery, slippery strongman before. <laughs> oh my gosh! Clearly not a real debater. Jesus. Oh no. I don't know who this person is, <laughs> but about an hour ago, I loved women. Now. I have that effect on people. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I've been. I've been never mind. I'm about to change my mind about uh, the influence of the Groypers. I don't know. Wow. I'm about to hit up my bookmarks. Honestly, good. Wow. I'm an incel maker. Is that true? Eh? Is that true? I don't know. That's what people keep saying. Do you think that might be worth looking into? Nah, I don't care enough. Okay. Based. <clears throat> I'm just saying, I've been looking at her Twitter for the last hour, and she's right about everything. Who can argue uh, that? Well, League of Legends cosplay, but I still haven't done Dishana. And wow. it's never gonna happen. Why? Because I don't want to paint myself blue. Well, hold on. Isn't Tristana You painted purple? yourself many colors. Wait, what color is yeah. Tristana? Purple, blue, whatever. It's all the same. It's a much more fun color than brown. You've done brown. What? I'm not painting myself brown. Uh -oh. Bet. Uh -oh. What? Oh. Hold on. Ooh. What? I've done my research. Kelly Blackface. <laughs> oh no. No, no, no. She wasn't her face. Fucking weirdos. There you go. Enjoy, chat. I'll tag you, Kelly. Wait, what? Paint yourself brown. A body paint, you dumbass. No shit, but he, you brown. still have to paint yourself with blue body paint to make his Yordle fantasy come true. Stop, like, why, how did this get so weird? <laughs> this is I mean, the weirdest part of the stream. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Actually, no, I, that was me projecting because I, I, my expectations, because I heard League of Legends cosplay blue and what, Tristana? Something like that? So I just assumed Destiny yeah. was asking for a, for a cosplay. He just asks everyone to do that. Based. It's a sign of affection from him. Based. Hmm. Yeah? What's up? Can we go back to what we were talking about before? Yeah, what's up? How about that? Sorry, I did want to add some clarification because this is a thing I think people miss about dictionaries because this comes up often in debates. You know, people want to refer to the dictionary definition. And the explanation that you gave about what what's in the dictionary, there's a lot that's implied there that I think people would have ended up confused. Can you restate? 
Oh, no. What I, if, that's, if I was having a serious debate with somebody, if somebody's in, invoking a dictionary definition in the middle of like an academic debate, I would instantly hang the call up because the conversation is beyond. I wasn't what? using it as a, a basis for a debate. I was saying simply that I don't understand mm, where well like, Stephen, there's mm -hmm. two definitions in the dictionary true I um, the, typically our engagement with I our engagement with like know. political or economic or philosophical concepts is going to extend far 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 beyond the dictionary once a dictionary definition has been pulled out your the conversation is lost right you're already well I think there's I think there are plenty of situations where you would want to appeal to the dictionary but I think people don't understand that like a dictionary is a very rough snapshot of some very like general and broad understandings. This is how this word can be understood by most of the population right now. And that changes over time. In the middle of a political debate, I don't know when I would ever refer to a dictionary. Mm, in, in the middle of a political debate, I can't think of any use cases right now. Uh -huh. But in conversation, there are plenty of times when if somebody uses a you know a word the wrong way or something. Sure, in conversation, say, like, yeah. If we're like, yeah. Well, but when we're having a disagreement over concepts or when it's a higher level conversation, which political conversations tend to be, right? It's going to require think, you to have like a better engagement with concepts than like, what does the dictionary say about this? I think you, I think you would... Uh, listen, dude, I listen to your channel way too much okay. to fucking... To suffer the illusion that you never have meta conversations. No, you have plenty of conversations about what a word means and like what it means in context. Yeah, whatever. but like when we're fighting over what a word means, it's never there, at the end of the day we can't appeal to a dictionary generally. Like we're appealing to common use or something, right? Like if somebody's going to debate, sure, do enough, you think enough. that like is healthcare is a uh, universal healthcare is that a leftist concept or a rightist concept? But we're, I mean, I can't appeal to a dictionary. We're going to have to have like a no, working of understanding of a lot of different concepts to. to uh, let, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me make a. There's a much simpler example we can use. Obfuscation. Yesterday, or Mr. Girl likes to say. <laughs> that you're obfuscating by going on these like really mm -hmm. uh, abstract extrapolations about language and shit like that going on philosophy of language shit mm -hmm. but like obfuscation is a very intentional um you know is a very intentional misdirection or or yeah. trying to hide your actual feelings about a thing mm -hmm. uh, and so like if he didn't feel like he was making that exact accusation eventually you might want to like, go to the dictionary well yeah but that didn't that, that was what he was making so we didn't need yeah, to appeal sure. to the dictionary if he said like i think you're obfuscating and or he's like i think you're being in bad faith and i'm like dude i'm trying to follow you as, as well as i can and he's like oh no, no i know you're trying your hardest but you're just like you're acting in bad faith then i'd be like wait hold on i don't think we understand what or when you say bad faith yeah. you mean yeah but i knew what he meant when he said obfuscation i'm not there saying was he no, was using the word wrong yeah I mean, there was no I disagreement over what the word meant word. so we didn't need to appeal to an outside source to figure out right but you might because i i hear that word used like you know wrong quite often and so if i can that's like one word where you might want to go to the dictionary pretty often or like, if somebody wanted to use premature instead of preemptive or something like that i had a conversation sure. with somebody recently where people were using like, e uh, I, equivocate for equal to yes. this, and this yeah sure so i don't know if you if you say something you keep saying equivocate but i think you mean this and they're like no i mean equivocate sure. in a debate or, or i've been using the word effect a lot recently and people think i should be saying effect like if you want to effect a certain change in society everybody's like you mean effect but yeah, sure. fucking idiots. <laughs> you, you, they're like, you mean effect. Yeah. Exactly. That's what they sound like. Yeah, exactly. Fucking jerks. True. I hate when they say that. Yeah, so... Um, I mean, it didn't come across as obfuscating to me, it, but it did kind of seem like it was just dodging a bit based on the fact that it seemed as though you think there is far more uh, interpretation to the word than the average person probably does. The average person is an idiot, but it's my job to not be fucking stupid <laughs> when it comes to political engagement. The average person, of course, thinks there's um, only one or two definitions for a given word. But if I talk to thousands of the average person and all of them have different definitions, it's not contradictory for each of them to think only one or two defini definitions exist for a word when I know that all of them have their own definitions for it. That's the problem. Right. I mean, people don't have an inbuilt dictionary, but they can still come to a conclusion that's very similar to the last. It's not about conclusions. It's about what they mean when they say a word. If I pull 10 people on the street or 10 people from different communities about what Nazi means, I'm going to get 10 different answers. You really think that they would be that different? They'd be meaningfully different. Yeah. What would be the meaningful difference? I already gave examples earlier. Some people think if you vote for Trump or that Trump is a Nazi. Some people think if you support Blue Lives Matter, that makes you a Nazi. Some people think if you're a race realist, that makes you a Nazi. Some people think if you believe in IQ differences, that makes you a Nazi. Some people would say if you believe in some kind of eugenics, that makes you a Nazi. Some people would say that if you're an atheist or a Christian, one of the other can make you a Nazi. Some people think if you're an Aryan at all, like, or you believe Weren't in- Weren't IQ differences kind of disproven? Nothing has been proven or disproven as far as intelligence goes, no. Research was pretty bad. Um, but Nazis don't really no, no. care about that. They yeah. still but also, have the belief. Yeah, nothing in intelligence is proven or disproven. It's a highly complicated field. But the um, 
but there's going to be tons of disagreement on, on what you need or don't need to be a Nazi. There's going to be a whole family of qualities related and unrelated to each other that make up what a lot of people different. A lot of different people think about what the term Nazi means. Hmm. I mean, the examples that you gave just sound like screaming weirdos on Twitter that are kind of disconnected from reality. Not really your average person. Yes, and those same weirdos have turned many people off from being able to Wait. even communicate with each other. About no, hold on. Like political I would thing. reject that too. Most normal people won't have a good working definition of Nazi. Here's a, here's a mm -hmm. bet. Here's a bet that I would make. I okay? mean, I'm European. I feel like I disagree. <laughs> yeah, but you don't even know what Nazi means. You wouldn't be able what to tell mean? me like. Hard... Uh, You're also British. You're I just not European. gave you my definition. You didn't give me your definition specifically. I asked you for your definition, and you appealed to, and then read the dictionary definition. No, I did. She did give a definition. It was someone who's racist, sexist. No, that was the no. dictionary definition. No, it's different from the dictionary. Okay, what do you think Nazis believe? Mm, supremacy. Of white, what? Like the white. No, you're wrong. Best. You're already wrong. You're already wrong. Racial superiority. Lots of people believe in racial superiority. And uh, that the other races are lesser. Whether or not they want to kill them or not is seem... But a lot of them not, so when Nazis killed. don't believe in white supremacy, okay? That's an American multicultural version of Nazism, okay? Nazis believed in Aryan supremacy. It referred to a more specific group of people than just white people, okay? Because they I sure mean, as fuck killed Serbs and... Aryan was, Hold on. Like blonde hair, no, no, no. You're, you're, I'm just, I'm showing you that things. even in your attempt to define it, you don't fully understand, like, what the beliefs of Nazis are. You, you just have a bunch of, like, random definitions that kind of fit and kind of don't. That's my whole point everybody's like that everybody has different like somebody might have a more sophisticated understanding he's like well it's not white supremacy because there's a lot of white people that nazis didn't like they fucking murdered a ton of polish people ton of Serbish people ton of like other other types of people that were quote-unquote white they didn't consider them white but yes but it's no they didn't consider like them aryan yeah, but, uh, yeah, sure, but this is just feels like being a bit pedantic. Like, I knew already this about Aryan. You came in here to be pedantic. No, and it's not pedantic. No, it's specifically I not pedantic. Understand. It is not pedantry. It's literally the, it's literally what it means to be a Nazi. If you're going by traditional forms of what the Nazi Literal party in Nazi, Germany believe. Sure. Literal Nazi, yes. Okay, I'm going to be pedantic <laughs> and say that it is pedantry. It's still, it is pedantry. You're just saying, in this case, you're like using it in a way that you think applies or is valuable. Uh, but when she came in trying to be pedantic, it was like not valuable. Do you consider Jewish people white? Are you asking me that? Yes. I mean, it depends if they're white. <laughs> Do you think Nazis consider Jewish people white? No, I mean they killed them anyway, right? But they also killed like yeah, you know, they they just killed the uh, the undesirables in general, right? No, it wasn't just undesirables in general. It could be black people, mixed race people, Ro the Roma people, Jewish yeah, people, Slavic they, people. Like they're all like they're all... And the disabled people, homosexuals, <sighs> okay. etc. Yeah, okay, true. <laughs> Top six answers are on the board. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Why are you? Are you? You're tr only here to trigger me. You're just trying to trigger the fuck out of me. That's what you're doing. <laughs> no. I'm just here to trigger. I the was fuck genuinely out of me. interested because no one really asked these questions, and it kind of got into screaming matches, and I kind of lost track of what was actually going well, on. Well, the problem is every time I start to answer, you do this thing. You're like, oh well, you're kind of fucking retarded. <laughs> Didn't you even think of like when the most I obvious thing? That? That's what okay, you're. I don't know if you're aware of it, but the tone of voice that you're using and the way that you are. I'm just. Fucking British, I can't No, it's it. not. I've talked to lots of British people, okay? They do not all talk well, like this. That is not true. I'm just fucking special. I'm not doing it on purpose. Okay, I'll... Okay, deep breath. Okay. I'm back to normal. I'm reset. Good, good. Okay, what are your... Are we good? What are your... Are you done? Do you have any more questions? Yeah, uh... Yeah, I think what's up? Somebody else was talking though, so... No one else is talking but you two. Oh, okay. I thought somebody was interrupted earlier, and then I feel bad. Nope. We were all interrupted by you and your bullshit. Whoa, bruv. Oh, no. But the conversation was fine. I think you need to pump the brakes there, bruv. Hump the brakes? Skirt. What? Why do I need to hump the brakes? That's what I heard. That's... What? I'm not going to fuck my car. What? What are you guys talking about right now? 
Okay, you know what? I wasn't making a joke, chat. I thought he misspoke. That was it. Mm -hmm. Um, anything else, Kelly? Or the floor is yours right now. I'll be honest, I can't remember at which point the conversation stopped because it ping-pongs back and forward too fast for my tiny brain. Well, just recenter. Think about whatever questions are filling your cranium right now, what thoughts you're thinking, the things that are bouncing around, pinging off the inside of your skull. The floor is yours right now. Completely yours. There's three people in here. Why Everybody am I is being waiting for spotlight? you right now. I already said a Because lot. you took center stage, you so did play the take role. center stage. Now play the role. But I most. Okay, no, don't do this. I, I see what you're doing. We're all waiting for you, Kelly, no. K Dog. Yeah. No. Drop some big wisdom on us. Big I'm wisdom. Not gonna drop drop the big whizzies for us. Drop the big whizzies. Whizzies. Drop big whizzies. Them. Big whizzies. Whiz it up. But drop them. Anything? This is a uh, peak mental illness right now. Okay, no whizzies. Gotcha. Take us to the whiz kingdom. That's where we wanted um, to go. But I think you have there. to buy her premium. Oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry. I am so sorry. I can. That's. Oh, it's not even ironic misogyny. It's just actual misogyny. I That's know. what you're doing right now. I'm sorry. Are you though? Can't believe this liking guy is a platform, dude. It's okay. I thrive on it. You thrive on Lycan's platform? No. This misogyny. It's funny. Me too. I don't. Don't appreciate it. To at be all. clear. And never mind. Yeah. Well, you better fucking call Lycan a misogynist right now. Why? Because I'm looking at the dictionary. First, no, no, no. First, I need her to define it. Ooh. <laughs> no, He's we don't need her. Said it. Why do My I good friend Merriam Webster has already done the legwork on this one. Oh, what does Merriam have He's to say? He's the about one that this? said that that's what he was saying. I don't have to defend it. What is Merriam saying on this one? Now you guys care about the dictionary? Yep, we do, because that's what you said we have to care about. I just looked up the Oxford and... Uh... I didn't even say that. I just said there might be a little bit of room for interpretation, but it's not as big a deal as you are making it out to be. Cool, then let's go you ahead and grab the dictionary. You think there's a thousand different variations? No, of I think there's team. tens of thousands of different variations. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you laugh at me dismissively And I don't, there. I guess. If I were to do that, they would call me a sexist. Nice female privilege there. What, men aren't allowed to laugh? Not at women, not like that. I would be killed where I'm from. They'd kill me. It's misogyny. That doesn't seem true. Well, it is. That's my life. All right, instead of floundering for content, uh, allow me to try to sum up your position on this whole debate over the last couple days. Me? I haven't been able to watch all of it or whatever, but I think I understand the basic arguments, and I think I understand a lot of the arguments people are making and the arguments that they feel they're not getting a sufficient answer to, so on and so forth. Cringe. May I? Cringe, bro. I think it's he doesn't knuckles. want to say he's a Nazi because it won't be as funny when he's eating chicken and waffles. Wow, nice. Damn. <laughs> well, I got my answer. I may not. Uh, yeah, go do what you want. Okay, it sounds to me like there's a demand for you to call Nick Fuentes a Nazi and just say, hey everyone, I have an announcement to make. I've decided Nick Fuentes, I punched the numbers up and you know what? He actually does qualify. I've fucking slotted the abacus. He qualifies as Nazi. He fits in the Nazi box. A lot of people want to hear you say that. Mm -hmm. And you have, you have said it. That's how you introduce him to Gideon, if I remember correctly. Like people have asked, who's this guy? And you go, hey, he's kind of a Nazi guy. I feel sure. like I vaguely recall that. Yeah. But my friendly neighborhood Nazi. It seems like uh, there's like a will for you to make a more official announcement that you fucking like calculated that he is unequivocally a Nazi. Mm -hmm. And your position is, whether he is or not, uh, it's like I'm not gonna succumb to that demand because people don't actually want to hear me say that. People have already come to the conclusion that it's true, mm -hmm. and what they actually want me to say is they want me to place the condemnation on Nick they that want he's to say a person. Nick bad. <laughs> Yeah, th that his values are so unacceptable mm -hmm. that he is he is not worth ever engaging with again, and we can feel justified in throwing him away from society. And given that your goal is to like communicate to him, but not only to him and like understand him and his positions, but also to communicate with him for the purpose or for the benefit of uh, his audience, your audience, and anybody who might 
be interested in Nick as a person or you as a person or either of your ideas um, sitting down and making this like official announcement that he is a Nazi um, is counterproductive because most conservatives are now used to and very, very sick of those words being thrown around, racist, Nazi, sexist, homophobe, transphobe, to the point uh, where it, they just turn their brains off and they just default to not believing it when a person says it's true because they're so used to so many people uh, using these terms where they don't apply or using these terms where they apply so vaguely or so minimally that it's not worth trying to strike them with the hammer of that term. It's and brave so of you, you do... to think that they turn their brains on a lot. Nice. Powerful and stuff. If the whole point of you having these conversations on some level is rhetorical so that you can reach people, mm -hmm. so that you can reach an audience, not only the individuals, but the audience, it's like best for you, even if you think the word applies perfectly, to do everything you can to make sure that like your voice is reaching those people. No, I disagree. That... Here's okay. what I think is important, okay? You're close, kind of, but you're putting the wrong thing there. Um, well, Mr. Girl made this one thing. component. No, 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 hold Lots on. Let me, just, let me focus in sure. on one thing, okay? Let me focus in on one thing, all right? If I had a working definition of Nazi, and we all consistently believed in one, and it had normative baggage along with it, I'd call him a Nazi, 100%. I'd have no problem with that. Problem is that it's a confusing word with a lot of different definitions, so that's why I don't. I don't not call him a Nazi because I'm trying to reach out to his audience or blah, 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 blah. I don't call him a Nazi because my goal is to be empathetic. Now, some people confuse empathy with kindness or compassion. That's not what it means. Empathy just means understanding. Well, empathy actually might imply some level of... No, empathy, listen, just I'm so tired of this word. No, no, wait, wait hold on, wait, okay, wait, I don't want to get sidetracked into that. What, what, well, you okay. can be I'll say instead of saying empathy, I'm just going to keep talking about it. Instead accident. of saying empathetic, I'm, like, the, the people both. are looking for a level of understanding, right? Yes. If Nick and his audience were genuinely Nazis, and I called them Nazis, then that would be fine. I'm not losing anything by doing that, because they're like, yeah, duh, we are Nazis. But when I call them Nazis, and probably at least half of them, or it, or maybe actually, maybe the majority of them, it's hard to know, anywhere from 50 to 98% of Nick's audience would say, I'm not a Nazi. And as soon as I call them a Nazi, they'll feel like they're not being understood, or Nick feels like he's not being understood. That's the problem. So that's the okay. goal, yeah. If I, if, I, if I feel like I'm lacking, but if they genuinely were Nazis, um, like if I were to call them like Christian fascists or something, that might be a word I would use. I don't think they'd give a fuck. Nick himself would be like, yeah, I'd probably be a fascist, sure. Nick might even say that. Why does Nick not think he's a Nazi, and do you agree? Because generally, people with a sophisticated understanding of politics that know that Nazi means more than just somebody that cracks anti-Semitic jokes or questions the Holocaust isn't a Nazi. That's the issue. That's you're, you're, you're setting a very, very, very low bar there for Nazi. Is that all he does? Yes. But when, in terms of what makes you a Nazi, generally, yeah. Nazi is a pretty, mm -hmm. if you're in a politically sophisticated community, um, Nazi has some pretty specific connotations that Nick doesn't even come close to meeting the threshold of. Um, so it, and his community is probably going to know pretty well more than most audiences what a Nazi is because they've been called it so much and because they deal so much in that area. Let me get some clarification. Go so I just, I want to make it perfectly clear. Make it perfectly clear. If you thought Nick was a Nazi and mm -hmm. fit perfectly into the Nazi box, yeah. uh, but you recognize that he was playing a rhetorical game to mm -hmm. try to keep people from knowing this about him or thinking this about him so that he can sort of extend his political influence into people that would otherwise be disapproving of Nazis, you would not avoid, you would have no mind for rhetoric to avoid the use of the term to potentially shut off the brains of people. Correct. That I wouldn't care. Because I, I don't, mm -hmm. I, my, when, the thing that I believe shuts off the brain isn't calling them a thing that I think it's bad. It's calling them something that demonstrates a lack of understanding. Like, for instance, when I say, because he's a race realist, and I'll say, bro, you're a race realist that thinks that black people have genetically inferior brains. I've said that over and over again. I'll keep saying that. I think that's a deplorable view. And I think people know I think that's a deplorable view. But when I say that to them and they hear me say that, they're not thinking like, oh no, does he understand? They'll be like, yeah, I am a race realist. And like they, that, so I'll say things that I believe are negatively, normatively loaded things sure. that most people hear. Yeah. I have no problem saying things like that. Um, and I don't think it hurts my ability to communicate that. Cause they're like, yeah, I am a race realist. And right. Hmm. I mean, I think you can say things that you think are true, but that can hurt your ability to communicate with people in, in, in an audience as well. I mean, theoretically uh, it could, depending on delivery of what we're talking about exactly. Right. Yes. Your well, audience I mean, has I a ton of virgins or something like that. That might be true, but it's not, that's not getting me anywhere. So. I feel like I've heard you talk about this before and I actually agree with this. So I think this, whether or not you do, I'm curious if you agree with this, uh, like certain terms might apply perfectly. It might be perfectly concise terms like 
fucking white supremacist or whatever the hell, where if you used it, uh, you would want to avoid using that word with certain audiences because they're just going to scoff if you use it or they're going to think it sounds soy. I feel like that's what a lot of the argument's been about. And I actually think that's a valid consideration. Yeah, I need to stop using... Let me clarify this on, 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 on soyness, okay? When I say being soy, a lot of people in the community and a lot of people in general think being soy is emotional. There's nothing wrong with being emotional. Even in an argument, there's nothing wrong with being emotional. But to be emotional in argument, you have to earn that position. When you start making accusations about somebody and the accusations don't line up with their reality and then you get emotional after those accusations, then you come across as soy. If I give a whole speech to Nick and by the end, I'm like, bro, you, the race realism shit is garbage. It's based on bunk science. Most of the people that are justifying it are sub 105 IQ anyway. It's leading to a fucked world where you blah, 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 blah. Like, I can give an emotional stimulus, and it's not going to be soy. But if I say shit like, um, a perfect example of soy is, um, you remember when Lauren Southern and the other guy debated um, the serfs, Lance and that white rabbit dude? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lance's speech at the end was soy. Because it was just a whole thing where he was like, Lauren, you're a Nazi and you do this and blah, blah, blah. But he hadn't earned any of that. Like half of what he was saying wasn't even true. So that comes across as soy. But if he would have given an impassioned speech after dominating her in the debate, he'd be like, Lauren, everything you're doing is downplaying the atrocities of the people that the natives in Canada face and blah, 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 blah. It would have been fine, even though it would have been quote unquote emotional. So soyness is just when you act really emotional, but you're not even making true observations and you haven't earned the right in that conversation to be emotional. Sure. Well, let me zoom out a little bit. Yeah. It sounds, I, I feel like you would want to avoid terms. I would avoid terms. I feel like this is a thing that I would like to do rhetorically. Mm -hmm. uh, that I, if, I, if I can like predict that uh, the audience that I'm trying to reach on the oppositional side mm -hmm. uh, is going to assume that I am being soy to the extent that I'm trying to make emotional appeals and try to steer away from the substantive appeals or try to convince them of things that may not be true or that they don't agree with yet. And that trying to convince them of that thing without like going through it substantively and granularly. Um, kind of demonstrates that I know it's not true. Oh, uh, maybe? I don't know what, what all you said there. Or what was the word that you said to Sneeko? Toxic. That you said Fucked his mind. Toxic. Mm -hmm. Perfect example. Mm -hmm. You might even think that that's the perfect word to use, and you think that it is toxic for something well, about relationships. I don't remember what it but is. But that word fails the test for the same reason all the other ones have, right? Is that when I say toxic, Sneeko might think I'm only referring to um, like all forms of masculinity because he's heard toxic used in media enough that like, oh, when people exactly. say men are being talked, well, what do you mean exactly? But That's you think that this word applies perfectly. Um, I have an understanding of the word that applies perfectly, just like exactly. I might have an understanding of like the word Nazi or something that applies perfectly, but like. Yes. So, so you would avoid this term even though you agree with its use and like you think it applies. But you would avoid it because you just like you can predict that. The well, yeah, because yeah, as long as we have a misunderstanding of the term, or I believe there's going to yes. be a disconnect of the term, I would avoid the term. Sure. So it did seem important enough to you to introduce Nick to Gideon that way to say, yeah, he's kind of a Nazi guy, like because you wanted to. Sure, get because I feel like quickly. because I this I'm gambling here, but I'm making a guess on the lack of political sophistication of the audience that when I say Nazi, they're probably just thinking like he's kind of like a a racist, like super far right dude. It's probably about their level of engagement with the word. Yes, you want them to know that this guy is like more extreme than your average conservative, like way more extreme. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Well, glad we got to the bottom of all that. I wonder if we broke the cycle. But notice in the notice the big difference there. Um, well, you maybe you'll know. So what's the big difference between me calling Nick a Nazi versus me telling um, Jadion or um, Don or the other people in that call that Nick is a Nazi? Uh, the difference is that if you called Nick a Nazi, mm -hmm. uh, do, am I only meant to consider Nick here? Like, like if I'm talking like to Nick one on one on stream, or if mm -hmm. I'm talking in that group call, what's the difference there? Okay, if you're talking to Nick and you're saying you're a Nazi, that comes mm -hmm. like an accusation, which the, in the, G the Gideon context, it does as well, but mm -hmm. we'll get to that again. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then he gets to sort of agree or disagree, and he has disagreed. So I'm not, I'm not a Nazi, right? Nick has said that. Um, and now you have to have a discussion about whether or not Nick's a Nazi, and you have to compare your ideas of what a Nazi is and what qualifies. And the more that Nick can make the case, and the better that he can make the case that he does not qualify as a Nazi, the more it hurts your credibility. Kind of, a little bit. So it's actually, it's way more simple than that. When I'm I mean, isn't it a good thing if he puts out all the ways in which he isn't like a Nazi? That no, might make that's actually like, the worst like, thing. And that's one of the reasons why really? I hate doing that. Yes, because you can give a ton of reasons why he's not a Nazi. And then people like you will be like, oh, shit, maybe he's not at all a Nazi. And I'm totally wrong. That's the issue. Um, right. And it, uh, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, wait. So real quick, real quick, real quick. It's not, not what people individually well, see him as, but the things that he's saying he's not, he's then saying they're bad. So I'm not on the money with the credibility. What is it? Okay, yeah. So there's a, one huge difference. When I'm talking to Nick and I don't want to call him a Nazi, 
and I'm talking to Jijian and other people on the panel when I do want to call him a Nazi, the difference is, is who is my speech aimed at? When I'm talking to Nick and I don't want to call him a Nazi, my goal is to show empathy or understanding for him and his audience. I'm not going to call you a Nazi because like, I'm here to show you that like, I understand what your beliefs are and I'm going to engage them with an honest Can I put a pin in this? Well, okay, go. Okay, but doesn't it have the same effect if you're saying to somebody else that Nick is a Nazi? And no, 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 okay, stop, no, 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 okay, stop. So let me finish my discussion. Okay. So when I'm talking to Nick one-on-one, -on -one, my goal is to show empathy and understanding. I'm not gonna call him a Nazi because by doing that, I'm being unempathetic towards his audience. In the conversation with Sneeko, Judeon, Young Don, and Fuentes, when I entered that conversation, my goal wasn't to talk to Fuentes' audience. My goal was to talk to the other audiences. And in that case, when Fuentes is primed to like go super, uh, you know, apologetic throughout and do everything, well, hold on, he, he that dude's a Nazi. And, and in that case, I'm using that word Nazi as like the N-word. I am signaling he's a bad dude. <laughs> I just want you to know he's a real bad dude. I'm not trying to show empathy or understand his audience. In that sense, his audience is probably going to be really hostile to me in the context of that conversation because I'm not aiming my speech at his audience. My speech there is going to be aimed at Jadeon, Young Don, and Sneeko's audience. That's the difference. But doesn't that harm your ability to come back to the table with Nick in the future? And nah, like, people's brains reset empathy. real quick on, on conversations, I think. You come, I, I'm having a hard time believing this. No, I think so. I'm, a lot I'm of them were like probably me. pretty upset with me, like in that convo because I came off as like really heated. But like people only remember your last three streams. People only remember your last two convos. Like, I you can have like cannot, no. I can't believe you're saying this. If I mention your name to people in the Twitter sphere, it's do you know what he said three years ago about Kenosha? Come on, dude. Like, so the you difference carry there, this I think there's a difference there in how I can reach audiences. I thought about this for a long time, and I finally figured this out like a week ago. I actually figured this out. Oh my god. I should pace my notepad sometimes. I was typing shit, trying to figure out why does it feel so much more easy to communicate with right-leaning audiences than left-leaning audiences? Because it really does, and it shouldn't be. I feel like it should be easier to communicate with left-leaning audiences. And this is why I think it is the case, okay? A lot of lefties just aren't funny. No. But, That's true. Okay, kind of. But A lot of these righties, they're very charming. They might be Nazis, but they're very charming. True, okay. So with left-leaning people, left-leaning people have the ear of the world. Me walking in and trying to show empathy or understanding to a left-leaning person is actually never gonna work because they've already got all the empathy and all the listening in the world. In fact, my message to them is probably gonna come off as more harsh than another person on the left. If I'm talking to a very left-leaning person, my messaging is probably gonna be less empathetic. It's gonna appear less compassionate. I'm gonna come in and be like, listen, not every problem in the world is racism. Listen, not everything is sexism or white supremacy or whatever. We need to have some personal responsibility. We need to talk about this. So me coming with left-leaning audiences, that puts me on the back foot immediately. But right-leaning audiences, these people are starving for any kind of attention at all. They feel like nobody in the fucking world is listening to them. If you're like a normal average white dude, or if you're a fucked financially white dude, nobody's making movies about you. Nobody's sticking you in magazines. Nobody's tweeting funny or cool things. You're getting shit on constantly on top of the already fucked status in life you're at. If you're a poor middle, lower middle class mm -hmm. white dude, yeah, everybody hates you. I understand. Yeah, so for but these now people, you're not yeah. making so I'm just saying, I'm just saying that the, the way that I can approach these two groups, I, I like it's so easy to get a right leaning audience to be like, oh my god, like this dude's like super understanding, blah blah blah. But for the left leaning audience, these guys are like princesses. They're pampered and spoiled with how much people are giving them an ear. So that's a difference. I understand, I, I understand. But now you're not making an argument that people just forget after three days and they'll always give you another chance. Now you're just saying that um, that these that right leaning people have so little leverage. Uh, and, and they're just, they have so much, so little to bring to the table because they're they're on the back foot. Yeah, that's what I mean. To with a left-leaning person, stuff. if I fuck up like one time, like, ah, I do a fucking Nazi, blah, blah, blah. With a right-leaning person, I can abuse them a lot more because they're going to come back because I'm like, oh, fuck, well, at least he understands for me now. at least a little bit, right? Um, for for now. now. No, yeah, they're, they're like, it's a calculus. Like, there's going to be some, if I were to do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, like, people are going to be like, okay, fuck this loser. Like, fuck this guy. But, like, me and Nick are ideologically opposed. People do know that. And there's going to be, like, some level of combativeness. People know that. So I think I have, like, people aren't going to generally write me off one time or after a few, like, harsh debates, I don't think, in the same way that left-leaning people are, because they're still hungry for those people to understand or be empathetic towards them. But okay. are you sure that's not because you're giving them so much more empathy in the first place? No. No. Left-leaning people have too much empathy, and it is actually yeah. fine. I, no, I don't think it's the empathy. They already have too much. I don't, don't want to give them it. No, no, no. I don't think it's. I don't think it's the empathy. I mm -hmm. think it's the hedge money. I think it's the um, how much power they have. 
It's but the, the power as... comes in the form sometimes of too much empathy and understanding. There are too no. many excuses made for those groups. Look at Keffels is a great example. She's a literal terrorist, and she's she got has like power. I'm yeah. saying that she's got the power but, now. It's not empathy; it's power. But where does that power come from? It comes from we have to be nice towards trans people. If we don't, they're all going to forty-one percent themselves. They're all going to commit suicide. You can't be mean to them. Like that's where the power comes from. It comes from an overuse of empathy. And when you look at where the attacks on the other side go, it's from a lack of empathy. Fuck this dude. He's fucking. What this guy's white privilege. He's a fucking color. Colonizer. Like these people, are, right? You you can't mm -hmm. the, like everybody on the on the on the white side um, is already like instantly attacked. He's a male. He's a fuck, probably a murderer, rapist, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know. So like, yeah, I think I think it does come from. Yeah, she has power, but I think that power comes from an overextension of empathy or compassion to that group of people, and it makes okay. them invincible. Go ahead. How this about is... we don't give Nazis or annoying leftists on Twitter empathy? That's an option. Well, we don't have to because the leftists already have an infinite amount of it. That's the whole point I'm making. Uh, this is something I've wanted to talk to you about for a little while. Yeah. I think you've talked about this before, and, and maybe this is quick, like fast turning into a meta conversation about you know whether or not empathy is exactly the driving factor that causes them to have power in the first place. Mm -hmm. Because I think people can be empathetic of lots of things, mm -hmm. but people don't have a lot of cultural power despite having that empathy. Whatever it is, it's that like people have power because you know maybe their current cause is reflected by terms of service, and those term you know those clauses are enforced quite frequently, and there are high-profile examples, so on and so forth. I think it's very similar to, um, you know, the way that people stopped coming to the table when they started having a platform of their own. Mike from PA, fucking Hassan, w Vosh. What did they do as soon as they had their own kingdoms? They cut out all the threats. Um, yeah, whereas, but there. Wait, okay. what about or what about it? What is what is the point you're trying to make here? Okay, the point that I'm trying to make is that those are bridges that are effectively burned as a result of poor rhetoric. And I'm basically at this point just appealing to like why you should still want to optimize your rhetoric at all times, whether you're speaking directly or indirectly. And that the big difference between talking to right-leaning people and left-leaning people is that oh, no, but, like, the, the difference mm -hmm. is that like when I'm talking to right-leaning people, because of how few people are catering to them, I can get the ear of a right-leaning person and demonstrate empathy and understanding without having to lie. In order That's for me to I show mean. empathy or understanding to a left-leaning person, I almost have to engage in lies. That's the issue because they've got people that are up their ass so much that they almost refuse to engage with reality. Everything is I, white supremacy. Mm. Everything is racism. Everything is trans. That's not true. Some trans people are just garbage fucking humans. It's not always transphobia. Like to I, say that that is already transphobic to some people. Or like look at the trans. Look at trans everything. A sorry, lot of, we yeah, need to back go, up. I'm, go, I must yep. have missed you. I must some have missed you somewhere. Trans people are shitty. Some trans people definitely are shitty, but aren't like old. Nazis shitty. No, not necessarily. Um, I think we missed each other somewhere. I think the, sure. the last thing that you said, I'm not sure the where we majority of trans people are oh shittier God. than Nazis? Um, more Nazis are more likely shittier than more trans people. If I had to do like a numbers game, prob that's probably true, I would imagine. Okay. <laughs> not a very strong position to take there, but okay. Sorry, I'm trying to take accurate ones. But like Kelly's a really great example. Like look at how much she's demanding of me in terms of dishonesty in order to like appease her point of view. Right? I don't have to be dishonest to make a really right-leaning person. I don't have to make a right-leaning person. I don't have to lie for them to feel like they're being heard or understood. But for people on the left, I basically have to engage in like in, in, in full-out dishonesty for them to feel like they're being heard. Because they're already used to people doing it so much. You're the best at everything. Everything bad is because of sexism. Everything bad is because of racism. Like, I can't talk to a person like that. Their mind is fucked. They've got so much positive reinforcement from every sector of society that if I come in and I give even a, a little bit of pushback, I instantly am able to be written off as an enemy in so many different ways. It's like I understand where you're coming from, and I do think that it makes interesting content and conversations, but like the level of cognitive dissonance that you have to have to get to the point where you're like, I think Nazis deserve more empathy, does hurt my brain a little bit. Why do you think people become Nazis? <sighs> I don't think that they all had a bad childhood. Why do you think some people Nick become Nazis then? For the ones that didn't. I don't know. Have you asked Nick why he came up with his views? I could probably guess. No, we don't want to guess. We want to ask him. I don't okay. think a lot of people know why they have the views that they have. So let's take a guess. Let's take it. Why do we think? Okay, actually, okay. You don't know the answer, so I'll tell you. So this is another reason. There's another side project of why I associate with these types of people, okay? Because I think a really big thing, um, this is really cringe to say. Um, I think it's good to talk to people. Fuck, never mind. I don't want to. Well, hang on. Look, yeah. Kelly, didn't you say that you studied sociology? Oh, only at college. But yeah. As opposed to where? Uh, in the UK, you go, you do high school, college, uni. I see. Uni is like, I understand. Okay, well, what do you think is the most important consideration 
that you learned when studying sociology? And like, what's the real meat and potatoes? What's the point? I learned a lot of stupid shit in sociology that's not particularly applicable now. You're not answering my question. It was written by old white men hundreds of years ago. Blah. Okay, you're not answering my question. What is the point of sociology? Do you think it's a valuable thing? Study Do you think it's a valuable of society. Study? Well, it's more than just the study of society, right? <sighs> it's the study of socialization. How society shapes people to act Was it in certain really, ways and vice versa. Does it really add much clarifying that? Oh, well, you appealed to it earlier. I figured you thought this was valuable, so I guess now we know that when you brought it up earlier, you were just full of shit, or... There was a reason for why I did. What's <laughs> okay. your reason? Other than being fucking annoying. <laughs> That's my big problem. You, got you know, crushed that's the big... again, Wicked Supreme. You're just getting destroyed. You're getting destroyed. You know what my In big every problem sense is? Of the word, dude. I'm too autistic to know if that's my big problem is that I'm too annoying. You know? Be true. You are actually. It's okay. I am the most annoying. Okay. Well, maybe you can answer the question this time. Why do you think people become Nazis? Can you describe the process by which a person becomes a Nazi? Ignorance, um, the way How do they get that ignorance? Up. How do they become ignorant? They don't get a very good education. They were poor, Okay, wait, maybe. so not edu not education being poor. These are things that are outside of a person's control, right? Yeah. So then... But, uh, <laughs> there are a lot of people that didn't have any of these things and still thought think this way. Okay, why do you think the majority of people have shitty views? If you studied sociology in school, give me that answer. This is the easiest thing in the world. No, I'm not going with majorities in this because there will be some people that have shitty views because of genuinely sad. Why reasons. do you think most people have shitty like, views? I don't. Is it real? Do we have proof that it's the majority? Like, is yes, there, we like, do. I don't have. Yeah, we have. It's called physics. It's called determinism, honey. Okay. Well, like I grew up poor around ignorant people. Oh like, well, shit. I grew up poor also, and I'm a fucking millionaire now. So I actually think we should defund all schools. Um, I think that you should um, tell everybody all the stuff over there. people like us by saying. No, I I, I truly think nobody should go to school. Us. I wasted time doing it. Um, I don't think that we should have like welfare or anything. I didn't need much of that. Um, yeah, I think that for the most part, people should be just be left to their own devices and figure all their shit out. Because that's that's what I did, and that's how I figured my life out. So, uh, sure, I agree. But then people aren't good at that. Some people, I guess, and then they. Oh no! But you said oh, you. No, no, you no, said that's, you. That's great. That's great. That sounds like a problem, <laughs> Kelly. It sounds like a problem that some people aren't good at that. Can you think of a way we can fix that? You think that they're gonna change their minds because of this Twitch stream? Have we? I'm asking you. Anybody? I'm asking you. Say that you've identified a problem. I'm asking you if there's a solution that you can conceive of. Have any of Nick's views changed from knowing Steven? We're not talking about Nick right now. Oh, also, I think Nick's views have changed over time. Yes, I would say they have. As much as my chat. Well, that'd be here. interesting. I would. I would be interested to hear about that. Well, when I was on stream, he admitted to one. He said he used to think Jews were seventy percent of the world's problems, and I think now he said they're. He said now they're thirty to fifty percent. I believe that's a huge Whoa. movement down. That is a. I consider that that's significant. That's a fifty percent reduction. That is. That's significant. What is it with Twitch streamers and the most bizarre statistics they just pull out of their ass? It's so strange. Oh, ninety-six percent of them are true. I don't know if you knew that. I want to kill myself 100% of the time. Like, what? What is the point of this? Click and pull up energy beams. See if you have them on on easy mode. What? What? Hey, how much energy is your base generating, Destiny? I don't know. You, He's you saying I'm on easy little... mode. Easy mode? How does that impact your energy generation? I don't know. I'm trying to ask him. Wait, am I, is there an easy mode to this mod? Pull up some grass. Let's talk about it. I think he's just making shit up. You have one coming in. Okay, sorry. What were we saying? Hey, how come you're not using fast conveyor belts? Because it's cringe. What were we talking about? I, Someone listen. in the chat said, listening to me is worse than watching League of Legends. So I feel like you should play League of Legends as well as oh, me being here. Based. Yeah, true. And we can talk yeah. about League of Legends, the three of us, together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So what were you Let's saying? start right don't, now. Go ahead. What were you talking don't, about? Don't ever watch any of your old videos where we play League because the F word was said. What? Um, nah, no three shot. words per minute. No way. Not back then. Whoa, we were yeah. good people on the internet. It was very bad. Hey, it wasn't me saying it. Nice. Base. I guess I just tuned it out because I didn't remember. Uh-huh. What were you saying, Wicked? Uh, Wicked? Hey, you know how when you're playing Tristana and you're in bot lane, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, you uh -huh. know, basically earlier I was trying to make an appeal for why you would want to tune your rhetoric to be as optimal as possible to not alienate 
you know, another person's audience or another person that you might want to bring to the table labor, uh, you know, later. Because mm -hmm. I feel like there's this, there's this element that that's been missing. Because you know, I hear you talk about this and in, in which people are willing to come back to the table and which weren't. Mm -hmm. And I really think a big part of it is whether or not it's necessity, right? Like if you don't have the necessity. If you don't have the fucking necessity to come back to the table right now, Nick and the Groypers, they, like, they're operating on the necessity that Nick wants to grow his platform. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have enough. He wants to grow his influence. In order to do so, he needs to interact with people. Vosh reached a point. Hassan reached a point. Mike from PA reached a point where they became so comfortable that it was no longer necessary for them to interact with people that they could contend with. And because there was this whole cost benefit of like, damn, this guy actually poses a credible threat to me and whatnot. In this way, I feel like um, you, know, you might still want to watch out from saying something like, oh, you know, Nick's kind of like a Nazi guy, even though it's a convenient thing to do, I'm just making an appeal for like why you would still want to avoid using Nazi. Yeah, but I think I don't think I can because like then what if I like come on that podcast and now we're all chummy and now there's a whole bunch of people with like really yes. friendly. I, that's too there's, much there's of a risk. Yeah, that that's too great of a risk. I don't think I could tolerate that, or that would be an unacceptable threshold. I mean, I feel like screaming and screeching at people that they're Nazis is obviously not conducive to causing any change, but also y you don't do enough by only being kind of nice to them and showing X amount of empathy. Uh, I feel I like I've this pushed should be back a against them quite a bit. Uh, I push back I on him a ton like this in should be more every conversation we've had. I feel like this should be more. Give me an example of a time I when I didn't know. push back on him. Nick tends to do this thing where everything is a joke, and that gets we him tell a of lot life. of jokes. But tell me a time he where I haven't pushed back on him. Do you push back on all his jokes, or do you? No, just I don't. Like, I joke. Like I like the joke. I think a lot. I think Nick uh -huh. is a funny guy. I think a lot of his jokes are funny. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, Kelly. Tell me right now that you're not trying to convince Destiny that he's done something wrong, and that you have an idea for how to fix it. Uh, why do I have to do that? Because it sounds like it's what you're trying to do, and I'm worried that later you're going to say, I'm not trying to, you know, convince you of anything or influence you or something, when it sounds very strongly like that's exactly what you're trying to do right now, and I want to make sure that's the case. I'm just myself. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I'm, I, I don't even stand a chance. I'm getting so destroyed. You're just I getting bodied every I, time. I'm fucked. Do you I understand fucked. that you're getting fucking Jesus. bodied? Jesus. I got, dude, I got fucked like your mom. Okay, as long as you know Christ you're getting almighty. bodied, then I don't care. All right, Clydesdale's dead. Okay. Wait. What the fuck? Did I make him leave? Wow. You crushed him. You crushed his spirit. Yeah, I'm good at that. Nice job. Wow, that was impressive. One of the few debate losses I've seen Supreme take in wicked fashion. Another insult of the pile. True. Now I have no one to bully. This is boring. Well. Anyone else want to join? Um, Anybody? That might be it. You might have cleared the room. You got him, dude. Everybody's pogging. <gasps> Everybody's pogging for how much you crushed. I think they're just being annoyed at me for talking at all. But as soon as I leave, then they're gonna be sad. True. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe it's time for me to leave, guys. I'll be back in. <laughs> You leave. Damn. 36. Well, no, I have a flight in like uh, like 10 hours.